We're going to close out on this. It doesn't mean we're not going to see um, the Bible when it comes to the book of Acts. But I want, to, I want to talk to you about what have we learned? What have we been learning and highlight some of the things that I feel is most important, whether you attended or not, whether you missed any week or not. I want to highlight some things that would allow us to move to the next season because we're, we're, we're ready for a new season. Can you say with me a new season? Amen? You can say a little bit more conviction. Come on, people. Let's say new season. Every time there's a new season, it's a new year, and, and as parents, right, those of us that are parents, um, this feels like really the new year, you know, when you have your kids, and you got to bring them back to a new school, or maybe a new grade, or a new um, teacher, whatever it may be, and it, this really feels like it's the moment where, where we start again. And as a church, we, we want to encourage others to be part of it. As a matter of fact, I want to highlight something that is coming September 15th. If you go to the announcement real quick, we want to highlight... Um, as we get ready for the next month and the fall, that we are joining something that nationally is called Back to Church Sunday. So right after 9-11, something that happened was that a lot of people felt that they wanted to go back to their faith. And every church and houses of worship got packed that following weekend right after September 11th. And after that, they started this, this um, focus on motivating people to say, hey, let's go back to church. Let's connect again. Let's really not, not wait for a catastrophe to happen for me to go back to our faith. When we were really in a problem, situation of, uh, of, of need, it's like we call to God automatically. It's in us. So this is the moment where I want to encourage you to look at your contacts, look at your friends. 80% of people don't come to church because they don't get invited. I never get anybody telling me no. They probably say, not yet, maybe I'm busy, I have something to do, but everybody appreciates it because they know that you're telling them it's something positive, something's going to be a blessing to them. So we will be focusing this and also focusing on a new um, season for Alpha, and we'll give all the details as we keep going through our chat. But keep in mind that this past month has been a lot of foundational and teaching ourselves, like, hey, what, is, what are we about? So we hopefully can now share with others. And you share what you know. Whether today's your first day or you've been in church for 10 years, it don't matter. You share what you know. And that's enough, and that could be great. So let's go back to what have we learned. One of the first things we've learned, um, you could go to it. I'm going to go more on that. Is that we need the power of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Maybe you grew up at church, maybe you didn't. But I, I know we probably have heard about, you know, when people pray in the Catholic uh, uh, um, tradition, you would say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, 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 is um, the one that moves us to know more about God. Is that, that essence that is in our hearts, that we are all created in God's image in the same way. I have a body, but I got a soul too. And if you had the, the unfortunate reality of losing somebody, you know that there is the complexity of our being. What we call our being, it's more than just a body. I used to work five years in the hospitals with, um, you know, cases of brain death. And every time we were there, it was always every family looking at their loved one, laying down there with a bunch of machines and saying, that's not my mom anymore. That you see the body, you see the shell, but you know there's something within that it's not there anymore. Some people even would even attest to say, oh, I felt like they visited me or that they talked to me. Like they feel something. And I, I want you to, be, to know that because many, many times it's, it's, it, you understand that there's a Holy Spirit because you feel like you have a spirit within you. That many times words, <laughs> they don't hurt you in the outside, but they hurt your soul. That is within you, your heart. You know what I'm talking about? So as we think about this, this is why it's so important that we know that it is the Holy Spirit that helps us in everything that we do. The Bible verse that we want to uh, remind you, it's Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Because the Holy Spirit gives you that strength, that power. He's a person and he gives you that power. It's kind of like, um, did you see the Olympics? I'm still with the Olympics, sorry guys. I know the Paralympics are coming, you know. But I love, if you, if you, if you like check out that video about the coach and the coach's reaction, 
I think one of the most beautiful part of the Olympics, it's not just the people that run, but the people that are behind. And the coaches, specifically when, when Australia started like beating all of us in the U.S. and swimming, and like there's the swimming coach from Australia, that he was just going crazy because, you know, um, this girl was winning and beating the, the, the favorites. And it's just like that encouragement. They're not there swimming but it's just like that encouragement and motivation and, and, and just inviting you to have that power, that motivation. I feel the Holy Spirit, it's within you. It's the training within you. But it's also that who tells you and motivates you and gives you power to do, to do what? And you will be what? Say with me, witness. What? To be a witness. Telling people about we, me everywhere in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. You can go to the next. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals us Jesus. Many times we don't understand much about Jesus, and it's important for us to say, hey, Holy Spirit, help me out. You're the coach. You're the one that guides me. So this is a verse that we had already gone through, and I want to remind you. Go ahead. John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. It is the Holy Spirit that really helps us understand who Jesus is. And I'll tell you this much, at least this is my experience. I grew up in church, I grew up about knowing about God, but I didn't know God. I heard about the story, I knew about the Christmas story, but I didn't know specifically who he was. As, uh, until I, I hid my teenage years and I started questioning life and trying to understand who I was. What, what was it that, that was taught to me? And you kind of go back to your beliefs to really understand it, if it's real or not. And I remember having a true encounter with the Spirit of God and feeling in my heart that there was something new and different. And it was the Holy Spirit that helped me then understand that I was a sinner, that I needed Jesus, and that I needed to be transformed and changed. And I couldn't do it on my own. I didn't feel I had done a lot of things because I felt like the bad people are the people that are really on the streets and they're, they're um, beating others and, and, and lying. I didn't feel I did any of that stuff. But just one day, I, I felt that I just needed something more. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you witnessed that in your heart? Because many times you don't, you don't acknowledge it. That's why we need to pray, God, Holy Spirit, help me and reveal Jesus to me. The other thing the Holy Spirit does is that the Holy Spirit also convicts us of sin and lets us know when we're doing something wrong that is wrong. Many times we don't know. And I remember the time that I used to live life in a way and doing things and not really feel it was bad. You know, you sometimes need to know the law to know that you actually broke the law. Some people just don't get it. There's things that may be okay in this country and then you go to another country and you're literally breaking the law. Or you go into another country, it's completely fine. But the reality is that the Holy Spirit tells us when we're doing something that is not right. Have you ever felt that voice? Some people call it, you know, the voice of reason or the little angel here and the little devil here, right? We've seen it in cartoons. I feel like that's the word of the Holy Spirit. Look, he convicts us, convicts us of sin. Go ahead and go to that verse. John 16, verse 7. In verse 14, we're going to read, he says, Jesus is telling us about the Holy Spirit. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he, he takes what is mine and will declare it to you. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Let me just make sure we got that verse. Yeah, go back to that one. So that here in Acts chapter 2, go to Acts chapter 2. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I was like, okay, that's not the verse. <laughs> when the Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Have you heard the word conviction? Think about a trial. Think about the moment when somebody gets convicted of a crime. That conviction that comes, it's sometimes something that is imposed. But the Holy Spirit comes and brings this conviction so that way you could act out your values. Sometimes the brokenness in this world is because we don't act out what we really want to do. I don't want to, you know, fight somebody, but I wind up fighting them because of the way that they make me feel. I don't want to have a problem in my, in my marriage, 
But why do we have tension in our marriage, in our father-son, um, father-daughter relationship, or, or it, you know, between families? Because we, we, we don't live out what my intentions are. My intentions are to really care for you, but sometimes it doesn't come that way. Have you ever thought about something and then you're like, wow, I should have not said that. That did not come out how I thought I was going to say it. And I don't know if this happened to you, but sometimes you just flip at a moment. Maybe at a line, you know, in a cashier, paying at a supermarket. And I don't know if this happened, but this happened to me. I'm being honest. And I come out and I'm like, what, what did I do? Why did I say it this way? Why did I snap at somebody as I'm driving? Like, what happened with me? That voice, that conviction is why we need the Holy Spirit because it tells you, listen, what you intend in your heart, let me help you now in the actions that you're going to do. Now, let's go to this, this statement. I think it's so important. Go ahead. The, the next one. This is what I want to invite you to think about. The enemy will always bring you guilt, but the Holy Spirit will always bring you conviction. The enemy, when you do something wrong, will always invite you to hide like our kids do. <laughs> I don't know why they do this, but they come by default. They do something, and then it's like, I didn't do it. I didn't eat the cookies. And you look at their mouth, and you know they ate the cookies. I've been caught, you know, red-handed a bunch of times. And I remember being a kid. I'm going to confess to you today. And I took cookies, and I didn't pay for it. And my mom knew about it. I couldn't give it back, but she called me out on it. Can I be honest with you? That's where the, they were the worst tasting cookies in my life. <laughs> because I knew that it was not right. They probably cost like 50 cents. But I just, I don't know. I just wanted to see what it was about. So usually when you have a problem, when you do something wrong, we hide. In Genesis, the beginning, the, the people, when they first, you know, Adam and Eve, when they first um, commit a sin and they realize that they committed a sin, they hide. They try to, you know, just run away. And, and God is, is, is asking for them and trying to look for them. Where, where are you? You know? They're hiding because right away when you do something wrong, we tend to hide. I want to invite you to know that when you feel guilt, you're not going to move forward. Guilt never helps nobody. It don't matter if you come to church. I've heard this even on a psychological level. Guilt never helps you heal. If you have a situation where you need to forgive somebody in, in, in your family or a significant other, listen, and you bring to each other guilt, you're never going to really change the behavior. What helps us to change behavior is when we have conviction, which is that in our hearts that tells us I need to repent. And repentance is the Greek word metanoia, which literally means to change one's mind. And another term is to literally turn, make, make a shift in your route, right? Like if I'm going this way, repentance is I'm going to go this way. Because I'm not going to ask forgiveness. Carlos, come up here. And, and, and I hope these aren't new, new shoes, bro. No? Okay. This, like, stand over here. You know, I'm like, Carlos, I'm so sorry oh, that I'm oh, stepping stop. on you, man. I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. Do you forgive me, man? No. You forgive <laughs> Bro. I forgive you when you buy me new sneakers. <laughs> there you go. Faith is dead, bro. <laughs> so if I keep, like, stepping on the guy, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Now he's like, yeah, I got to give me new sneakers. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you give our blood to Carlos, man? It's a good. It's all in love, man. And it's like, hey, I'm still stepping on you. Can you just let go? Can you stop doing what you're doing and really show that there's true repentance? Because at the end of the day, you, you, the, the, what we're looking for and what the Holy Spirit helps us is to transform our minds. It's not that you're going to get everything right. But it's that the intention of where is your focus is going to make a big difference. Are you walking towards the light or are you just literally away from the light? That's what repentance is about. It's about daily looking for a transformation of the mind and not hiding, owning up and letting, know that, let, let, letting yourself let go in Jesus and he takes care of that. Another thing that we talked about, which is important, is to know that go ahead, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He's going to help us in everything that we do. Go ahead for that verse. Because if you love me, 
you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The helper is going to be with us. He is the one that will guide you, tell you what to do. You know, I, I said this before, maybe, and I just want to re remind you again if you never heard this, but I think that a lot of people know what good and bad is. For the most part, a lot of different philosophies, way of life would allow you to just understand what is good and bad. But once you know about God and you start walking with God and now you know what good and bad, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I just get, comp it gets complicated to me to make decisions when I have two good options, two good jobs. Which one should I go for, right? If, if you know, would I, what, should I study marketing or should I study finance? They're not evil, <laughs> you know. What, what, what should, should I, you know, buy a home now or buy an apartment? Should I do this? Should I marry at this point or this other point? Should, should, should I um, go on a career or open a business? All these are good things. So who is helping you? What is that voice that you're consulting to allow you to walk in, in, in the goodness of God and understand that, listen, this is going to be the best for you? Whether we don't know it, and that's why we need the helper. We need to pray, hey, Holy Spirit, guide me. I just don't know. If you open up a business, I, this happens to me sometimes. You know, like, for example, I've done sales before. And if you've done sales, you, you, you probably, you know, um, have a bunch of clients. Like, which clients should you call first? They're all good clients, right? Where should you invest first? As we, we guide the church in something new, we had to pray. If you were with us from the beginning in January, we, we were meeting at, at Coke Cafe at 7, 722 in Grand. But we're like, okay, where do we go next? And I met with, the, with, with some of the, you know, the team and advisory team, and I'm saying, hey, we have this option in the other school, in this other place. Which way to go? They're okay. We can't do it on our own. We got to pray to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, what should I do? What, what, what is it that, that my kids should do? And that's how we, we know that he is with us. He is your helper. You got a helper. You don't have to do it on your own. I know we want to do it on our own. The next thing that we learn, and I want to remind you, is that, go ahead, brother, number two, is that in the book of Acts, it tells us that we must seek the unity of the church, of the family of God. Go to the verse, and we went over this, this verse um, very early in the beginning. Verse um, 42, Sister Yolanda, please, can you read that for us? Thank you. All the believers devote themselves to the apostles, teaching and, the follow, and, and to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to pray, and to prayer. And keep sense of awe came over, a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miracles, signs and wonder. Forty-four and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared their money with those in need. They worshiped. Together at the temple each day, met in the homes for the Lord's Supper and share their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the, door, the, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Church is more than attending a, 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 a service or a, um, you know, a, just, just this, this kind of gathering. Church is about being there for one another. Um, Church is about protecting each other and really caring for one another's needs. Church is about us really stopping and pausing for a second. And if I ask you, how are you doing, actually waiting for people to respond. Have you noticed that we say, how are you doing, and we don't really care? <laughs> you know, because I'm not really like, oh, how is it spitting everything? I was like, good, 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 right? <laughs> like, that small talk that we do, it's all about quick, and I just want to show you that I'm nice. So how do we pause and we really care and we start showing that we are there for one another, that we want things to be good, that I, if I am able and I have something that you need and I am able, I want you to know that you could have it. Church is about being a family. And family, there are issues at the family, right? 
There's sometimes stuff that we don't like about each other. But at the end of the day, what do we say? It's family. There's some cousins and uncles that you may want to be like, can I not invite them? Like, can they not be my, like, part of the roster? <laughs> but they're your family. So the church is the same way. And we want you to understand that that's what God helps us to do, that we care for one another and we love one another. Can you go to the next one? Number three, we talked about the, the need to know that we need to share the gospel of repentance and renewal. Can you share that real quick? Can you say repentance? Can you say renewal? Those two things are important. And that's what we're about. There's a verse that is, I think you got it there. Yeah, right, right. At 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 and 11 says this. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. We are broken. That's pretty much what it's saying. But we contain in us something that is far bigger than anything. Far bigger than we could ever imagine. It's far bigger than who we are. And that is the light that shines through our own brokenness. When we repent and we turn away, we need to seek now renewal, right? Like if I'm stepping on Carlos' feet, now I have to look for renewal. Hey, man. Are you okay? Can I, do, I, do I need to take you to the hospital? <laughs> He's like, yeah, get, get me a new case. <laughs> what, what, can I, what can I do to help you? What can I do to really support you? Because repentance is one part of it. That only the Holy Spirit brings us in our hearts. Hey, you got you to gotta change. You, you, you're really hurting those who you love. You're hurting yourself. So that's repentance. I'm transforming, you know, my mind in God. And now I'm saying, well, what is the, what is the renewal that needs to happen? What is the renewal that needs to happen around me? How can I allow this light to shine? And it's for me to understand what is the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus is that we were broken, we need a savior, and he came to save us. He came to take my spot. He came to pay my debt. And I am thankful for his love because he loved me before I even knew I needed to be loved. If you're a parent, you know what that feels. Before your child could tell, I love you back, you know you love them like crazy. Before you can even hold them in your hands, just the moment that you know that you're expecting, you know there's like a love that is it's just deep, unimaginable. It's hard to explain it. God loves us way more than that. And that's what we want to understand and, and, and love. Listen, that in life, Verse 8 is going to lead us to the last thing I want to tell you today. It is that we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. Whatever is going on, we, we are right because God got us. So understand that we want to be a church that understands repentance, but we understand renewal. We don't want to just be people that repent and we're pious and we're looking for God to be good to us and, and just me and all about me. What about my neighbor? What about my neighborhood? What about the ailments of our neighborhood that we were saying, hey, we, we need to see God do something around here. And how can we connect to that and help it? And that's what you're going to continue to hear. The next and last is this. We need to be reminded, and the book of Acts ends with this, that God will remain faithful until the end. At the end of the book of Acts, it's a crazy story. It flips the script to a... Uh, like a movie of a wreckage. And, and these are the things that Paul went through. Um, if you could, I think I have it in the next one there. Listen, no, go to the next one. This is what, what Paul, what it says Paul, different things with Paul. The next one, it's okay. There you go. So Paul, in Acts chapter 27 and 28, he starts a trip, a, a voyage to Rome. Now <laughs> he is in chains. Now he's about to be taken to prison. And in prison, um, he knows that God is telling him, go ahead, you'll be all right. That's the stuff that's hard. When God tells you you're about to go through something bad and hard, it's going to be okay. Maybe I never share this with you and God is reminding me this. God told me that this church was going to happen before it happened. Somebody warned me and said, Pastor, I see that your season is over in this current situation that you're in. 
He told me this in July. And I was like, ah, you know, they're nice people. Oh, cute, you know. Probably they miss me. I haven't seen them in a while, you know. God usually warns you. And we want always good news that everything's going to go well. He's going to prosper you. All the things are going to go good. And then nothing, and God tells you sometimes, hey, my son, my child, you're about to go through something. But take heart because I'm going to be with you. So Paul knew, so he accepted it. And last week we talked a little bit about this. And he tells the church, hey, guys, I'm about to go here. And there's going to be a lot of persecutions, a lot of stuff. And people are just crying. And he's like, I'm never going to see you again. All this stuff is happening. And he takes his voyage now as a prisoner. There's a lot of good things that happen. Please go and check it out and read it. But it, first he encounters a dangerous weather. The weather starts getting crazy. Then he gets a storm. In the middle of the storm, they don't know what to do. And the, 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 the soldiers are like, what's going to happen? We, we need to kill these people. And Paul's like, wait, wait, don't kill us yet. You know, a bunch of prisoners. And he's like, no, 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 don't do this. And then, boom, there's a shipwreck. shipwreck. And, and, and they just um, um, completely gets broken. And they are in a, an island. They have no idea where they're at. And they survived in an island called Malta, which is modern-day Greece. While they're there, it's not enough. Paul is trying to do a fire, and in the fire, there's a snake and bites him. And, and, and he gets bitten by a snake. He finally arrived to Rome, but in Rome, where he's about to put, be put in, in prison. So all this stuff is for him to just carry out what God told him that he was going to go and do. And I want you to think about this because I don't know if you feel that way. Because when I started putting all these things together, because you read chapter 27, 28, but try to do that. When you take a notebook and when you read, just start highlighting things that they're going through. And, and it just feels like some people that I know, some seasons that I go through, I'm like, really, God? Another one and another one and another and a diagnosis, and on top of that, another diagnosis. And now my mom gets called, and there's another diagnosis, and all this other thing. And this, you have all these different things that keep coming. Well, Paul went through that. And you go back to that verse in Philippians 3, I believe, 4, four yeah. This is what he's saying now. Not that I, I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing. Or with everything, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty. Anybody can say amen? With plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. How many of you ever heard that? Philippians chapter 4, 13. A lot of athletes have it. You got to read the part before I have learned to be content in whatever situation because I know that I could do all things through Christ. I know that I have, you know, times where I don't know where the next meal is going to come, but I know that I could trust God in everything. I've been through storm and all this stuff. If you could go to the next verse there. And this is beautiful. And it's one of my favorite verses, Romans chapter 8, 28. It says, and we know that in all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Can we read that together? One, two, three. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Think about how God has worked everything for good for you. I know at the moment, this is not the verse that you want to hear. Right when you have a loss in a family or something or you lost your job, that you really felt that that was going to be the best way to go. But when you know that all things will work for good. What I love about Paul is that he knew. And at the end of it, he knew that, that he, he, everything was going to go work for good. While he got to Rome in prison, he writes a bunch of letters that we still read today. The Bible then says that he, the, 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 the gospel was being shared and people knew. He was actually not being persecuted anymore. He's in jail. He don't have to go nowhere. <laughs> now he's just sort of writing. And, you know, God gave him grace. And pretty much, you know, he was in a house prison, right? Like, but 
People used to come and he used to strengthen the church. And the church in Rome got strengthened. Isn't it interesting that now you have, you know, the Catholic church, the, the, it, was, it was started through Rome. But at that moment, people didn't really, didn't, didn't have that uh, Christianity the way that we see it today. It started through pain and suffering and tribulations and situations that maybe you and I don't really want to tell people. Can I encourage you today to tell at the end of it all, everything will work for good for those who love God. Can you say that to yourself? Everything will work for good because I love God. You say it with conviction in your heart. God, I know that everything, you're going to work it for my good. Everything will work for my good. I love you. And although I don't understand it, although it's, it's complicated, but I really pray, God, that in all things, help me. Help me, Lord, to connect with you no matter what. If you go to the last one, I want to encourage you to take action and understand this. Number one, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. Can I invite you to know that and be reminded of that all the time? When you don't have wisdom, ask God. If you work in the school setting, I know a lot of you, this, this, is, this is a stressful time. My wife is an educator. I know it's like new bosses, new this, new, new changes. It's a lot of things. If you're a parent or you're a surrogate parent, like you help uh, your niece or your nephews to be in school, like we all get into this. Like even before I had kids, like it just changes. Traffic changes in Jersey City because the schools are open. Like it's just different season. So whether you, you are directly impacted or not, you, you know, always know that, like, call on the Holy Spirit and teach your children to, to call on the Holy Spirit. Teach them because sometimes you're not going to be there, but you know who's going to be there? God will be there. Oh, I, especially when it comes to tests, right? A lot of people say, like, oh, they got to bring back prayer into the schools. Somebody's like, until there's tests. So the moment there was going to be a test in, in the school, there's always going to be prayer in the schools. Because <laughs> every time I had a test, especially like pop quiz, take out a sheet, let's go. I'm like, God help me. Right? <laughs> like, so that's the moments every time when anxiety hits, I need you, Holy Spirit. Second, let's, let's seek the unity for the church. Listen, this is work. And I'm telling you, and I'm warning you, one day you're going to have something with somebody and you'll be like, hey, pastor, I really need to talk to you. Because <laughs> I, I have a situation that I need to fix with somebody, and I keep telling you, that's what the church is about. Don't bail on God because you have a situation with one of his children. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I, I might do like a bumper st sticker on that one, you yeah. know? Don't bail on God. Because we're, we're, we're really tough people to love. We, everybody loves God, but, but us, we're, we're, we're complicated sometimes. So I want to invite you to think about this. We got to seek for the unity of the church. Why, why, why it's so important to just, you know, make the effort to show up. 80%, I always heard, 80% is just showing up. When you show up, you, 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 ready, you did most of the work already. Let God take care of the rest. So I want to encourage you to, to know that because as the church grows, there's going to be tensions that grow. And then people say, you see, every church is the same. I loved it when it was only 20 of us. Praise God. Can we enlarge our hearts for one another? Can we enlarge our hearts to love the people that are difficult to love? Can you enlarge your heart to love me when you know I do things and it's like, ah, it's not the way I would have done it. I got it. I, I hear you. I'm, I really, it's not, never my intention to, to offend you in any way. So I need your grace the same way I want to extend you my grace because we have received God's grace. Amen? Third is we need to share the gospel of renewal and repentance. Those two things cannot go away from one another. We need to know that it's through repentance that we get renewal. And renewal comes because of our repentance. So if we want to live life the way that we want it here, we will always encourage you to say, hey, go to God. Allow him to transform you and change you. You, you, you don't need to put this on you, but, but, but God loves you how you are, and he will start transforming your heart to look more like him and his heart and his love for you. And then renewal. We want to see renewal around us. We don't want to just be okay for ourselves, but what are other people around us doing, and what is it that they need? At the end of, of it all, I want to remind you what Acts reminds us, that God will remain faithful until the end. That everything will pass away. 
that one day your family may not be there. One day there's things, unfortunately, in this life, we're not going to be here forever. You know, <laughs> we're not going to be here forever. But at the end of it all, God is still there. Can you say amen if you believe it? Amen. Will you stand with me and let us close out? Can we just take a moment to just thank God? Take a moment to just thank God for his goodness, for all his grace, for everything that he's done for us and in us. Can we as a church just thank God about the summer? About this series that we've been doing just with the Holy Spirit. Just thank God that God opened up a door here at Regional Day. So a lot of great things coming up. We'll, we'll share it as we go, but, but I'm just thankful. Can we also thank God just as a team? We thank God that our worship team is bigger. Can we thank God of the people that are saying yes to helping out hospitality? We thank God just for his finances. Every, every time there's, God continues to support you. And because of your blessing, you're able to bless others. Because I'm blessed and I'm able to bless others. The blessing is not going to flow out of nowhere. It has to flow out of you. So I just want to, so church, can we just take one moment just to say thank you to God for what he's done. Lord, we, we acknowledge your presence in this place. And I acknowledge, Lord, that even standing here is a miracle. Lord, I am broken. And there are days that I feel way more broken than others. Lord, there are days that I feel high. There are days I feel low. But you know what? What I thank you is that you remain the same, always. You never change. You, you, you don't, you're not moody. You're, you're you, Father. You always remain. And I thank you because you extend that love to me and for me. Lord, today I pray and I thank you because up to this point you've taken us, Father. Lord, your word is so rich. There's so many things that you continue to teach us. And I pray that you help us to grow in you and to grow with you within and, and to share the love that we have received with so many people around us. Lord, help us to love those who are next to us, also those that we don't even know yet. Help us, God, to love. Help us to share with others your love. And help us, Lord, to, to really be available to others so other people can get, get, get that love and the opportunity to just experience you and experience love in this community. God, I thank you for everything that you've done up to this point. I thank you because everything has worked for good because we love you. It hasn't been easy. Some days have been dark. Some days have been cloudy. Other days have been very sunny, and I thank you for those sunny days. But today, God, we just want to say thank you for everything. Once again, Lord, we bless this school. We bless Regional Day School. We bless Principal Colleen. We bless Mr. Sean and Mr. Mike and all the staff, the security guards. We bless all the, the, the support staff that helps all these children that are so vulnerable and that need you so much, whether they're, they're, they have limitations when it comes to uh, um, their, their physical bodies, Lord, but, but they're whole in you, God. Their spirits are whole. And we pray, Lord God, for them, for their blessing over their families. We pray for, for our local school, PS22. We pray, God, for every school represented in this place, in our families, high schools, colleges. Lord, we just pray your blessing upon Every person, God. Allow us, Lord, to, to continue to just connect and, and, and grow together as a family. Um, and, and, and just thank you, God, as we move into a new season with you, God. We just want to say thank you. We pray this in your name. Amen.